want to show you another example graphically in a second. But there's a word that kind of accompanies everything I just said, and the word is signature. Signature. And when I say signature, I don't mean your endorsement, but I mean that other signature. You know, you think about, you go to that restaurant, and they've got that signature entree. You, you, you go to, or they've got that signature recipe. You, you go to that concert to, to, to listen to your favorite artist, and he or she has that signature song, that, that favorite song of yours, that, that one, that most popular song, and you can't wait for the artist to sing his or her signature song. Or that, that, that athlete may have some kind of signature move on the basketball court, for example. Signature. I ask you all this morning, in your leadership capacities, what's your signature move? What's that thing that you do? That thing you may say, that program you may have implemented, that, that activity, that word, that phrase, that sentence, what's your signature? And when I say signature, I mean when you implement it, it's like everything just kind of falls in line. And everyone knows you because of your signature. This is, it embodies who you are. And see, I, I had this signature with these young men, but I, I had this other one. Let me, let me show you on the screen here. Take a look at them. I could just do the whole, I can do a 12-hour presentation and stay overnight on just the photo. I don't need any other text. See, without... Before I get into what you see, without the dynamics of what you see in the photo, I'm not qualified to be on this stage today. If, if, if I'm here just because I have an ability to articulate my thoughts effectively, then fine, and that's my qualification. But if I'm here because of the substance of the work, then that picture is necessary. My signature. I want you to take me out of the photo. And I know there's so many different roles in the, in the room, different capacities of leadership. I get that. But I want you to take me out of the photo, and I want you to insert you where you see me. Those young people that you're responsible for within your capacities, I want you to put yours in the picture there. And when you replace me with you and my students with yours, it's still the same photo. We just changed the character. See, in the photo, there are these stories. When you think about your kids, who we see every day, as you know, that's just the finished product at that time. It's, it's still changing. It's still evolving. But on July 15th, this is what we are in this moment, in this space. By July, by, by July 15th of next year, Many of us will have evolved. Many of us, if not all of us, will have grown. We will have exposed ourselves to so much information and learning that we're not that same person that we are today in 2016. But within that growth, within the trial and tribulation of the growth, there are stories to get you over to, over the bridge to that place. Well, here... There are stories, too. With your young people, there are stories. And the rhetorical question I ask you, do you know those stories? See, you only know that your presenter this morning dropped out of school because I told you. I don't think you would have necessarily figured that out. But I told you. And because I told you, it may have changed some of your perception of me because I got some baggage that got me to this place, you see. Well, young people are entering school with these stories every day. And those stories, in my case, and, and, and I'm sure in many of your cases, those stories are painful stories. They hurt. They're, they're these, these grave challenges, obstacles, children dealt with, the worst possible hand at birth, not his or her fault. And now, 
because of my situation, I've, I've lost hope. I never had hope. I don't see the promise of the future. I don't see that I have access to the world. I don't see the relevance teacher in what you're teaching every day. Why do I have to give my all to something that I'm not clear that there's this great outcome later on? That was me. And I'm sure that was some of you in the room. So I ask you the question then, do you know their stories? Because their stories tell us who they are. So I decided, if you could put that picture back for me for a second, that I cannot have you go into any classroom in the morning until the coach has the final say so. For those of you that know anything about sports, no team that walks out onto the field on the dot or the diamond or the ice or the rink or whatever the case, the court, whatever it is, without their head coach having the final word. You don't go from home to or, 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 or hotel to locker room and put on your uniform and then go out and play and coach said nothing. It doesn't work that way. And if it does work that way, then that's probably the team that's losing the most games. But the team where the coach, although he's been talking, she's been talking to them. The whole season, maybe multiple seasons, maybe the past 20 years, that coach will still have the final word. Well, I'm not sending those stories into a classroom not knowing what they may have experienced the night before without the coach intervening. I'm bringing you to the gym. I've got something to say. And it will have nothing to do with rules or consequences. My intent is to fire you up. That's my intent. My intent is to ignite passion for learning. So I want to give you a message, a very brief message, to just lay a foundation, that's all, to just set a tone for the day at hand. I'm not trying to do this for tomorrow or next week. I just want to get you right for today, and then we get through the next seven hours, and then we can start the process again tomorrow. So for the next 180 days, the head coach, you and I, has got something to say. And then after that, now my staff can reinforce the message. And now we can move on. It works like a charm. Because I can't expect the kid that doesn't want to be there who, or who doesn't see the relevance of being there to come into a classroom first period on, on, on Monday morning and is excited about receiving this math lesson as the teacher was excited about creating the math lesson. I, I don't see it happening. But if you and I and our leadership capacities, particularly those of you at the building level, can, can lay a foundation for that excitement, then there's a much higher probability that we're going to get that excitement.